Now let us look at some other aspect. We will now see a particular feature in functions. We generally tend to call the parameters. We divide them into args and quarks, arguments and keyword arguments. Let us understand what are those args and quarks because sometimes when you're looking at some of the functions, especially in the Python documentation, you tend to come across these arguments and keyword arguments. Let us see what are those. So let us see, we have already seen functions, some of the examples. So let us see some more on functions, a little bit of more detail that I want to give you so that you'll find it helpful later on. Let us suppose we are defining a very simple function. It is sum of squares. What this function does is, it will take the parameters A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. These are the four parameters this function will take. And in return, what it will give you, it will just give you this sum of square values, okay? Sum of square value. So it's simply what it does is it will calculate the A square value. You can use A into A or A comma two. So that is like A square plus B square plus c square plus d square so a b c d that's it and what is this function returning what you need to do is calculate some of squares of values and simply say ss val that is what you need to return i have defined this function once you have defined this function you can simply use it okay how do you use it Let's try to use this function. Let me call that function sum of squares. And what I want to give is one, two, three, four. First four values and their sum of squares is 30. There's one more way of giving it. Let's say I want to say A value is one, A equal to one, B equal to two, C equal to three, d equal to 4 you can give it like that so what is the advantage of giving with a b c d you can give in any order you can give b equal to 2 first since you are specifically giving those values and you can give a equal to 1 at the end the answer will not be different so that is when you know there is a fixed number of input parameters a b c d exactly four parameters i'm giving and the function has to calculate the sum of squares of values of those four parameters. What if the input can be any number of values? The input number of parameters can be any arguments. These are called arguments, A, B, C, D or those parameters or the these arguments that you have. This can be any number of them. It can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 100, 200. I can give any number. If that is the case, how do you take that any random input? Sometimes a user will give one comma two. Then I have to give some of squares of values of those two values. Some other users can give one, two, three. Some other user can give one, two, three, four. Then I, how do I give the result? So sum of squares, let me call this as any sum of square, any length. Okay. In that case, when you are not sure about how many inputs, how many input parameters are expected from the user, you can use this star args this is kind of wild character so args that means that args this is known as arg or arguments so this number is not fixed it can be anything so now what i'll do is i will define this ss well start it with zero some of squares of error then i'll write a for loop here for n in what what is the input args for n in my arguments, I would like to calculate, I would like to update sum of squares of values is equal to previously existing sum of squares of values plus whatever is the n value in that argument, n square. So what should I write? Power n comma 2. Return ss value. That is how I have modified my particular function. So for all the values in the given arguments, I will be doing sum of squares of errors. So sum of squares of values. So now I can use this function. I can say, can you give me sum of one and two? Yes, I can give you 
sum of squares of 1 and 2, there you go. Sum of squares of 1, 2, 3, there you go. Sum of squares of 1, 2, 3, 4, here you go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, yes, it's possible. Doesn't matter. The length doesn't matter. These are known as args, arguments. And there is no particular name for these. You just need to give in this particular place. You give as many as possible. What if I want to slightly modify it? What if I want to take this, whether you want sum of squares of the values, whether you want sum of cubes, or whether you want simply sum. Here we are fixing the power value. What if that power also we want to take as input? That means I want to take arguments. Do you want the sum of squares of these values? Mention my power equal to 2. Power equal to 2. If you want me to take the sum of cubes, then mention power equal to 3. If you want simple sum, then power equal to 1. So how do you take that? How do you define such function? So you just take this and then try to say any sum of squares when I'll take all the arguments. Apart from that, I will take another keyword called power. So here the same will continue SSVal equal to zero and in args SSVal plus power n comma instead of two, I have to give the keyword power or let me call that as power value, power val. So this is that power value. It should be one or two or three that you need to give power or power value. Function is defined. Now let us use this function any sum of squares one. Now I have to give the arguments one, two, three, four, or five, comma. And the second one is keyword. You have to specifically mention because that is a keyword. Keyword need to be mentioned in this manner. If I mention two, if I mention three, this way. So if I take another example, one comma two, I'm giving two arguments. If I just want the sum of those, I have to mention the keyword power equal to one summation of one plus two, three. Sum of squares is five, one square plus two square. Sum of cubes is eight plus one, nine. It's like that. In fact, you can actually, when you are doing the cube, there is a small twist, like say, you have negative values, you have positive values, then this cube may not be really giving us what we are looking for minus 34 the negative values are also there in this one what if i want to check if there are negative numbers i want to check from the user are you giving me negative numbers as well because if the negative numbers are passed as input i don't want to calculate anything i just want to simply return saying negative numbers are passed if the negative numbers are not passed then i want to do it in a different manner Okay, let us try to create another function. It should give if it if we are giving as an input that if negative numbers are true, then we want to follow a certain logic. If negative numbers are not given, then we want to follow a different logic. Let us try to write that function here. So the purpose of my next function is I would like to ask the ask the user if you are okay with negative numbers. If you say my negative numbers equal to true, that means consider the negative numbers. Then I'll go ahead with the general logic. If you say negative numbers equal to false, if you give me false as a parameter here, then I think that you do not want to consider negative numbers. You do not want any further calculation. You just want to exit. So negative numbers. I'm giving the power to the user. I'm giving the choice to the user whether you want me to do the calculation with negative numbers, then I can do it. But if you don't want to do the calculation with negative numbers, if negative numbers are passed, if you want to exit, then how do we modify that function? So here I'm taking argument, all the args, one, two, three, four, or something like that, and then power whether it should be power one or two or three and negative numbers true or false. So here is the modified code. If my negative underscore numbers is actually true. Now this true and false, these are not strings. These are Boolean variables. 
If that is true, then my logic stays like this. This is my logic, if that is true. If that is true. In fact, it has to be a colon here and then under this, isn't it? It's all under this. So, if you are okay with negative numbers, then as usual, I'll give you. But if you are passing negative numbers equal to false, that means you do not want to consider negative numbers. User doesn't want to consider negative numbers. Then I'll say else. In that case, if you do not want to add up negative numbers when they're, then I want to return negative numbers are passed. Negative. Negative numbers passed as input that's it because you don't want to consider negative numbers return okay this is the function so how can we use this function let me call it as sum of any squares two now i will call this function here is the situation i want to calculate sum of one comma minus two comma minus three and their power is equal to three i want to cube all of them and I'm okay with negative numbers. Negative underscore numbers is equal to true. Since I am okay with the negative numbers, I'll get the result here. But if I say, you know what? I'm not okay with negative numbers. Yes, I have passed the negative numbers. But when the negative numbers are passed, I don't want the user to get the output. False. Negative numbers are passed as input. The result is not calculated. Okay. That is what we are giving arguments. And these are some of the keywords. What if I want to add one more keyword? I What if I want to further customize this function? Even more customization. If negative numbers are passed, it is taking true or false. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to take negative power as well. Power is the usual power. For the negative numbers, what should be the power that we have to take? Like negative underscore power. We want to take another input as well. Let us see. Let us do a little bit of more customization to this function to achieve one more. We want to write a different function to achieve a different task. Let us see. In the next example, what we want to try is, let's say the power. Until now we have seen to the square, to the power one, to the power two. What if I take this function, uh, what if I want to pass on the power as minus three? Is this going to work? Negative numbers passed as input. And if I mention true, okay, take my negative numbers. Now, is it going to work with negative power? Yeah, it is working with negative power as well. But what if I want to restrict that? I want to give one more parameter saying if negative power, negative numbers is one of them, negative power. That means can the power be a negative value? Can you take to the power minus two to the power minus three? Now this also it will take true and false. If you accept, then I will give you this result. If you do not accept, then I want to print like the way it is giving as negative number has been passed. Similarly, I want to print saying the negative power value has been passed so we cannot do the calculation so how do you modify it first you check the negative power if negative power if you are okay with that if this is equal to true if this is true then i will continue whatever you told okay whatever you have given first i'll print saying negative power has been passed okay negative power is accepted okay so i'm printing that and negative power is accepted so i'm going to follow the previous technique which is like i will take that value and i'll make all the calculation it will give you the result okay that means it will take all the arguments and it will apply whatever power you have given power means minus two or minus three whatever it is it is accepted even if you give positive also it will accept okay negative numbers it will Accept the negative numbers or it will reject the negative numbers based on what you have passed. And negative power is accepted. What if that negative power is not accepted else? You have to write the else condition. You have to write it outside. Else. So this is for the 
negative power else so what will be the option return just like the way you have returned negative numbers has been passed okay negative numbers as input passed as input you will see negative power passed as input that means we are not accepting it or negative power not accepted we will keep it that way negative power is not accepted okay negative power not accepted negative power is accepted okay so you can execute this looks like there are two parentheses we will take one out of them yeah this is working then i will call that as any power square three this is the function so what i'm trying to say is you take this function and you take these values one comma minus two comma minus three and here i want to give the power is equal to minus three since i'm giving negative numbers i'm ready to accept them okay even negative numbers are also there i'm okay to take those negative numbers and that is uh, true and if negative powers are there negative power that also i'm accepting that means i want to see the result negative power equal to true okay negative numbers are accepted negative powers is also accepted so you will get the result for sure negative power is accepted but what if i do not accept negative power negative power equal to false what will be the result it will simply skip this negative power is not true it will come here directly in negative power not accepted that will be the output negative power not accepted now if you look at this function carefully you're saying you're okay to accept the negative power but negative numbers you don't accept then what will be the result it will first print negative num power is accepted it will go inside but negative numbers are not accepted so it will print negative power is accepted but negative numbers has passed as input since you are not comfortable with it it will not print it so this is the function which is little bit complicated and there is a reason why i have created this function now when you are using this function you can actually rewrite this whole function in a little bit more uh, neat manner make it much more reader friendly so what you can do is these are all the arguments these are all the keywords keyword argument one keyword argument two keyword argument a so you can put a double star here double star and keyword arguments quarks these are arcs these are quarks keyword arguments k uppercase arcs and quarks okay now in those quarks you have values power negative number that is one of them and then uh, negative underscore power isn't it negative numbers the other one is negative underscore power these are the values because we are using power somewhere here we are using negative number somewhere here negative power we are using somewhere here so these are the values you can write like the way you are using args your n value in args right you can say in quarks so you can say quarks dot values in fact that quarks will be a dictionary <coughs> keyword arguments will be a dictionary you can use that dictionary so from that keywords argument dictionary take the power negative number positive uh, negative number and then negative power from keyword arguments and then rest of the function remains the same so let me call this same function i have simply rewritten it so how can you use this you can create a new dictionary called quarks okay this is my dictionary quarks equal to this is the new dictionary and it can have three keys power power negative number and negative power power you can give whatever value you want to give sometimes for larger very large functions in sklearn or some other places of python you tend to see these type of dictionaries have been passed as input parameters negative numbers is equal to true and then negative power 
is also true there you go now you can give this kw ox as input ox and quox can be given as input okay these are the keyword arguments what are my arguments my arguments are one comma minus two comma three comma minus six arguments are the triple and keyword arguments is a dictionary keyword argument the name itself suggests that there has to be a key and then the corresponding value okay now arguments and keyword arguments are given let us see how can we use this in this function how do you call this function first write the function name and you must give args so you have to put star args use my args in the place of that use this tuple and then in the place of keyword arguments you put star star k w a r g s since it is lowercase you can give lowercase here and then you go negative power is accepted and the value is 147 keyword arguments we have given args and quarks they are known as some of them are arguments some of them are keyword arguments have you understood this args and quarks because sometimes you tend to see args there is no order there is no keyword in this you can you can give any number keyword arguments there are a specific list of keywords that you have to give and the best beautiful part is these keywords need not be in any order because that is key value dictionary itself there is no order in the dictionary it will work in any order negative numbers equal to true negative power is equal to three and then the power keyword arguments So here when we are executing like this, it is throwing an error saying negative number, negative power not accepted because the key is in this one. We are taking quarks dot values and we are storing them in these three values. So if you go here and add quarks dot values and if you see the quarks dot values outside, it is a dictionary true true comma three. And in that dictionary, we are taking first one is power, next one is negative numbers, next one is power. That's why we have to maintain that order. If we change the function, if we change the way the function is written, then we can actually change this order as well. The order doesn't really matter if you change the way it is appearing, okay? Because the quark values, the keyword arguments, but here, the way we have written the function, it is accepting that power is in the, first keyword so we have to give the power in the keyword but if you change the way that keys are accepted okay if you can take all the keys and then put them in these values then we will be able to pass in any order or any manner okay that is how arguments and keyword arguments work basically arguments are the ones without any name keyword arguments are the ones that come with a name arcs and quarks to recap everything what we will do is we have to do a small exercise here in this exercise create a function that takes four values of the confusion matrix calculates the accuracy for example you have a confusion matrix confusion matrix looks like this you have the y actual values let's say zeros and ones you have y predicted values which are also zeros and ones and this is number a number b number c number d okay this is called a confusion matrix that is a part in a machine learning topic if you have already covered machine learning topic well and good otherwise it's going to come later on what is the accuracy predicting zero as zero predicting one as one a plus d divided by a plus b plus c plus t is the accuracy measure that means if you have overall 100 records predicting zero as zero you have done it 50 times predicting one as one you have done it 20 times or 40 times predicting zero as one you have done it let's say five times predicting one as zero you have done it five times then the accuracy is 90 50 plus 40 divided by 100 accuracy is 90 percent okay try to use args instead of general parameters in the above function try to use args do not use a b c d let's say you are taking four values of the confusion matrix A, B, C, D. Instead of that, try to use args. Add two keyword parameters, recall equal to true, precision equal to true. 
So if it is a recall equal to true, then include those two metrics in the output. What is recall? Recall is A divided by A plus B. Okay. Then what is precision accuracy of this one? A divided by A plus C. So if recall equal to true, you have to print this in the output. If precision equal to true, you have to print this in the output. Try to use arcs and quarks. It's not that simple. It will be kind of little thought provoking, but it will help you to understand arcs and quarks for sure. Before we move on to the next topic, I request you to complete this exercise. Then we will move on to the next topic, which is regular expressions.